Now we start out Saturday's show in the SEC as Arkansas takes on Auburn. Arkansas comes into this game as the 38th overall team in the hot to bet power rankings. Auburn is the 50th overall team. And for Arkansas, come into this game following a win a couple weeks ago over BYU. And it was a team that desperately needed a win. And, you know, going back into SEC play here against Auburn, this is certainly another game where they need to get a win. Auburn has really just not been a good football team this season over. Overall, their offense has just really, really struggled. Their passing game just isn't great. Robbie Ashford has played better than TJ Finley did earlier in the season, but neither one of them have really been anything special. Ashford, though, passing for over a thousand yards at this point, only four touchdowns, though, on the season for him. Um, Really the only bright spot for this Auburn team, if there is any bright spots at this point, would be Tanks Bigsby's, you know, done a decent job running the ball, over 500 yards rushing this season, six touchdowns. But overall, you know, with seven games under their belt, this Auburn offense really has just not looked great, especially against SEC opponents. They're only putting up 377.7 yards per game. And I think offensively, they continue to struggle here in this game. Arkansas, on the other hand, has certainly had their fair share of SEC struggles as well. KJ Jackson. Jefferson, though, um, on the season has a pretty nice stat line, 1,400 yards passing, 14 touchdowns for him. Halewood at wide receiver leads the team there with over 400 yards receiving. But again, the real you know strong part of this Arkansas team has been their rush game. Raheem Sanders leads the way with 870 yards rushing this season. And overall, he's a big reason why this offense has had some success. Um, and we saw you know that on full display against BYU. Overall, Arkansas does a pretty good job moving the ball downfield, averaging 400 and 88.6 yards per game defensively speaking for this team you know auburn may have a slight edge holding their opponents to 391 yards per game arkansas giving up 457.3 yards per game but i think this arkansas team just purely has the more talented roster and don't get me wrong both these teams have struggled during sec play this season arkansas's three losses and none of them did they really look good um, in any of those games but Auburn has just really, really struggled, and Brian Harson is just on the hottest of hot seats in the entire country right now. Quite honestly, I'm a little surprised he hasn't lost his job already, and this would be a turning point if Auburn could get something going, but I just don't see it. They've really struggled this season. They haven't looked much better at home, and against SEC opponents, they're just not a great team. I think Arkansas bounces back after a pretty rough stretch and a pretty tough SEC schedule they had before that BYU game. They turned it around against the Cougars, and I think they keep the success here. I'm thinking Arkansas minus three and a half on the road here against Auburn. Next, we head up north to the Big Ten as Rutgers takes on Minnesota. Rutgers comes into this game as the 69th overall team in the high tip power rankings. Minnesota is the 27th overall team. For Rutgers, get one of their biggest wins of the season, a win over Indiana last week. You know, it's been a long time since Rutgers has had success in the Big Ten. Finally get that win last week um, for Minnesota. Kind of the complete opposite, a bad loss to Penn State. And, you know, these are two teams that are, you know, completely well geographically opposite sides of the big 10 um but in kind of just style of play you know they couldn't be much different minnesota tanner morgan has been all right this season should be back here for this game passing for 1100 yards and seven touchdowns on the year um span forward at tight end has been his main target with 320 yards this season overall though it's really just a wide receiver you room um that could use some more production um mo ibrahim has been you know the the guy they've looked to to, to really get this offense going for Minnesota this year. 796 yards rushing for him, 10 touchdowns as well on the season. And while they do a decent job running the ball, overall, I'm just not super sold on this offense. They are averaging 32 points per game, um, which, you know, they should be able to score fairly well here against Rutgers, but don't get out what this Rutgers team can do. Quarterback Evan Simon has led this Rutgers team um, thus far this season, over 700 yards passing for him, but Overall, it's just not a team in Rutgers that focuses too much on the passing game. Much more of a running team. They got five guys over a thousand yards rushing this season. And offensively, they have a great style of play and can run the ball down your throats the entire game. They're only averaging 329.9 yards per game, um, but they like to drain that clock, like to run the ball, um, and they do a dang good job at that. Not to mention their defense has been pretty strong as well this season, holding their opponents to 283.9 yards per game. I've 
have really been impressed with how this Rutgers team has played this season and on the road I just don't see them getting blown out in this game granted the Minnesota defense has been fairly strong holding their opponents to 16.4 points per game they did struggle massively against Penn State last week but again on the road and Penn State is a completely different opponent than this Rutgers team but I think kind of like that game well not really like that game but like some of their games earlier in the season here for Minnesota I think they struggle in the second half to keep a big lead and I think Rutgers is able to just to run the ball drain the clock score a few points and keep this game close I don't think they get blown out here taking Rutgers plus 14 here against Minnesota Kentucky takes on Tennessee here in what is one of the biggest matchups on Saturday. Kentucky comes into this game as the 23rd overall team in the hot tip at power ranking. Tennessee is the fifth overall team, and everyone's talking about it. Tennessee gets the win over UT Martin last week. Really can't put um, a much bigger emphasis on the season. And as much as I joke about that, obviously the win over Alabama the week before was absolutely massive for this Tennessee team. And it feels like a team that is going to be continue to be dangerous in the SEC this season. But don't sleep on Kentucky they got a massive win last week as well against Mississippi State and you know looked very good in that game and it's a Kentucky team that stumbled a few times this season but overall what Will Levis has done I've been pretty impressed with thus far this season passing for 1600 yards 13 touchdowns on the year as well what I really love about this Kentucky team is how well of a job they do spreading the ball around this offense Robinson Brown and Key all wide receivers with over 300 yards receiving this season combined eight touchdowns between the three of them. And on top of that, they got a pretty solid rush game going as well. Chris Rodriguez has been solid with 395 yards, three touchdowns rushing for him. And offensively, they may not have near the firepower that Tennessee has, but they do a decent job scoring points, especially when they can rely on their defense, putting up 26.4 points per game offensively. This Kentucky team is for Tennessee obviously the story of the year in the sec hinden hooker has been outstanding over 2,000 yards passing for him um on the season has gotten a lot of guys going in their wide receiving room as well but jalen hyatt really does stand above the rest 769 yards on the season and 12 touchdowns to go along with that uh, an absolutely crazy stat line through seven games um thus far jalen wright also has done a great job rushing the ball with 405 yards um four touchdowns from him hooker himself does a good job running the ball with over 300 yards and three touchdowns on the ground and, and really the the biggest stat line and you know what everyone loves about Kentucky they score a heck of a lot of points averaging 50.1 points per game and through seven games that is a dang impressive stat line in an SEC that is so so tough um, granted they haven't quite had to go through that Georgia defense yet but we'll get to see that here eventually um, defensively though for Tennessee they scare me a little bit and I think Kentucky is able to take advantage of that um, and stay close here in this game it's a Tennessee team that has struggled to slow their opponents down at times granted their offense is able to keep up and just outscore you um, but they're still giving up 420.6 yards per game defensively for Kentucky they have been very very strong Strong, holding their opponents to 16.4 points per game and if Kentucky can even just slow down Hinden Hooker even a little bit which I get is a lot easier said than done is not going to be an easy task but I think they're able to keep this game close and I think a big reason why they're able to do that is because you know who Tennessee has on the schedule next week it's the Georgia Bulldogs and yeah no one's ever going to admit that you're looking ahead to a look ahead spot but if there's any game that you're prepping for before the week of and you're kind of looking over a, a Kentucky opponent that's not a bad team by any means, but a team that is certainly easier than Georgia, it's going to be this week for Tennessee. I think they're looking ahead to that game a little bit. I think Kentucky takes advantage of that, is able to slow them down offensively just enough to stay in this game, and I think they cover the spread. So I'm taking Kentucky plus 12 and a half here against Tennessee. Now, quickly, before we get into the final games here on Saturday's card, if you haven't already checked out the website, head over to hottipbest.com and take a look at the computer model picks up on the website. We got college football and NFL picks every single day. We got games, got the World Series going on, NBA and NHL seasons getting going, as well as horse racing every day. Of course, we got the UFC cards dropping every Saturday, so make sure you take a look at all of that, and we got college basketball season just around the corner. Also, follow the Hot Tip Bets main account at Hot Tip Bets on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, so you don't miss out on any of the content that's being posted over there. There. Follow my personal account at Hot Tip Chris on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, so you don't miss out on anything that I'm doing, as well as on Best Stamp, where you get a notification every single time I place a bet. And last but definitely not least, if you're watching here on YouTube, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future content. And most importantly, drop a comment down below. Let me know who you guys are betting on for Saturday's card. And let's get right back into college football. 
Now we stay in the SEC for this next game. Ole Miss taking on Texas A&M. Ole Miss comes into this game as the 11th overall team in the Hot Tibet Power Ranking. Texas A&M is the 44th overall team. And, you know, it's an Ole Miss team that had high, high hopes for their season before last week. And they go into LSU and get absolutely torched um, by that Tiger offense. Granted, I still think it's an Ole Miss team that's good. And when we look over at the other side of things, Texas A&M is just straight up bad. They have had some massive, massive struggles here the past few games you know they gave alabama a little bit of run for their money but ultimately this team just keeps losing games with haynes keen at quarterback i don't see it getting better anytime soon for this texas a&m squad um you know he hasn't played every game this season obviously with the injury um to to the freshman and all that but 941 yards six touchdowns on the season for him um you know stewart has done a decent job at receiver 390 yards their run game has been all right too and maybe their only saving grace here in this game with devin aiken um rushing for over 600 yards but Overall, it's just an offense in Texas A&M that really isn't that good. Only putting up 21.9 points per game. And we look over at Ole Miss. They did get shut down a little bit by LSU last week. But, um, you know, it's a Lane Kiffin-led offense that is just absolutely great. Jackson Dart passing for over 1,700 yards on the season. 11 touchdowns to go along with that, putting him near the top of the SEC. Um, with those statistics, Jonathan Mingo does a great job carrying the ball as or, um, receiving as well. Um, you know, 570. 75 yards, three touchdowns on the year for him. Um, but a big part of this team's success is actually in the running game. Judkin and Evans have combined 19. Touchdowns on the season. 19 touchdowns between two running backs, eight games through the season is a crazy, crazy stat line. And overall, it's a big reason why this Ole Miss team has been able to score points, averaging 38.3 points per game. Um, defensively, I think it's hard to differentiate these teams. They've both been, you know, fairly similar um, this season. Neither one of them has been great. They've kind of just been average um, when it comes to SEC defenses for Ole Miss, holding their opponents to 20.8 points per game. Texas A&M giving up 20.1 points per game. And I get it. College Station, never an easy place to play, especially against the Texas A&M team that has been struggling and is desperate for a big time win here in the SEC. But with that being said, Ole Miss comes off of their own disappointing loss, obviously ending their undefeated season and probably ending any chance they had at competing for an SEC title, um, you know, or a, a potential playoff spot. Granted, that dream's not completely dead for this Ole Miss team, but if they want to continue and, you know, get back up to that position, they can't lose to this Texas A&M team, and they certainly got to bounce back after that horrible loss last week. And I don't know that they're going to get to the SEC championship. I don't know that they're going to have playoff aspirations, but I think this Ole Miss team beats this Texas A&M team pretty handedly. I'm taking them minus one and a half here in College Station. And we finish off Saturday's card in the ACC. Pitt taking on North Carolina. Pitt comes into this game as the 49th overall team in the Hot Tibet Power Ranking. North Carolina is the 32nd overall team for Pitt. Enter this game following a loss last week to Louisville. And it's a Pitt team that I just haven't really loved this season. On the other hand, North Carolina barely able to hang on and beat Nuke, but or <laughs> Nuke, beat Duke. Uh, but it's a North Carolina team that is sneakily putting together something pretty solid here. I mean, over Overall, offensively they've been a strong strong team that no one's really talking about putting up 40.1 or 41.7 points per game drake may has really been outstanding for unc this season 2200 yards passing 24 touchdowns on the season for him not to mention he's rushed for over 300 yards and three touchdowns as well hampton has also been a strong rusher um, with 345 yards six touchdowns for him but when you got three wide receivers with over 300 yards receiving you know you're doing something right spreading the ball around and getting a lot of guys um in Involved with the offense and overall it's a North Carolina offense that it's really hard to hate on anything they're doing this season Pitt on the other hand have had their own fair share of struggles Keaton Slovis comes in and has had you know varying levels of success for sure but overall only passing for 1300 yards and five touchdowns isn't exactly the stat line um, that you want to see going into this game Jared Wayne has been decent um, his lead guy at receiver with 411 yards Israel Akaban has been a solid rusher as well with 959 yards 13 touchdowns on the year and that's really been their only saving grace offensively and you know for an offense that does a decent job moving the ball downfield 415.6 yards per game 
it's just a pit team that can't quite punch it in the end zone has to settle for field goals quite a bit and has really you know led to some closer scoring games than they necessarily should be in and um ultimately has led to some losses for this team defensively for pit it's been a team that's been all right holding their opponents to 333.6 yards per game um they you know the north carolina defense hasn't been great giving up 32.4 points per game um but it's a north carolina team that has certainly impressed me on the road here these past few weeks over Overall, they're just a team that's quietly putting something together. I mean, no one is really talking about this North Carolina team, um, you know, from a national standpoint. It's really just Clemson um, in the ACC, the occasional Florida State, Wake Forest, maybe. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing it. But I haven't seen much talk at all about this UNC team. And overall, with only one loss, yes, they've played some close games. Yes, they certainly have some weak spots and some struggles of their own. Um, but I think they can beat Pitt very, very handedly in this game. I think Pitt struggles on the road, and I think North Carolina covers the three pretty easily here.